This short video demonstrates how to use Limpro to define and analyze a two-span beam with some simple loading. When you start Limpro, it displays a grid with dots at one meter intervals, assuming that the units you're using are the default ones of kilonewtons and meters, which is the most convenient units to use. To define the first step in is to define the structure is to, to define the nodes. So if you click on this to create joints and click on a node point, I'm going to find two nodes that are four meters apart. You can right click and switch to defining members. Members can be of different types, which we can look at later, but for, for now let's assume that they're, each member is of the same type. So if we just click on the joints to define the, the arrangement of, of, of the beams in this case. You can then right click and switch back to the pointer. To define supports we can click on the, the nodes or control and click to select multiple nodes. And right click and define roller supports, pin supports, or fixed supports. So in this case, we'll pick pin supports. We can now apply some loads to the members, and the easiest way to do that is just to click on the individual member, or maybe to control and click to select multiple members, then right click and apply load. There are point loads and distributed loads. Let's first of all just apply a uniform distributed load. In the global y direction so that's so if you look at the hint it shows you that the load intensity you define it at the beginning and the end so you can have a triangular load or a, a udl a uniform load the a and b is where the load starts and finishes and they're relative to the first node on the beam and we'll see how that's defined so i'm going to define a load of 10 kilonewtons per meter in the negative y direction so it's acting downwards so it's uniform, so intensity is the same at the beginning and the end. You can define it if you use, if you use absolute units, uh, your A and B are defined in meters. I find it more convenient to use relative units, which is zero is the start of the beam and one is the end of the beam. So from zero to one, 0 0.5 would be midway along the beam. So we apply the load and it draws it. So if we also apply some point loads. We right click on the two selected members, add load switch to point. Again, in the global y direction, we'll pick uh, a load of minus 25 kilonewtons. And the position, again, if you look at the hint, you can see the y, x, y, and mo moment loads. A defines how far along the beam from the, the first node. So again, more convenient to use relative. So 0 0.5 means um, mid-span. Apply load, and we have that. So we're now ready to run the analysis and we use the green arrow button to run the static analysis and it shows the deflected shape. We can switch off the grid to see a bigger version of the structure by clicking on show grid. We can zoom, zoom extents will show the holes, fill the, fill the screen. We can then look at different types of output, bending moment diagram, we can increase the ordinance like that or decrease them like that. The T draws the shear force diagram, the axial force diagram, which in this case is zero because there are no axial loads, deflected shape, which we saw already is showing the maximum deflection in meters, the reactions at the supports, in this case only vertical reactions. If we want to make any changes, we need to go back to draw, redraw the structure and we can make changes. There are some tabular options. For instance, you can define new member types with um, define type 2 and you can put in some dimensions if you wish, some standard kind of dimensions. Um, or you can simply specify the cross-sectional area and the moment of inertia. Again, the units are kilonewtons and meters. E, the e, default E value is for steel, 200 gigapascals. 
and you can go back and select a particular member and ch change it to type 1 or type 2. In this case it makes no difference because type 1 and type 2 are the same, but that can be done. Um, if you click by accident, it starts doing this. So I just click again and it'll stop doing it. Now I just need to show that option again about the load. So if we just because the and I just zoom and pan like that and now go back to the pointer, click on a member, right click. There we can change the type of the member or can add load. If we want to put pin joints at either end, we can do that. So see these are two simply supported spans. You can do uh, join zero. Not, uh, not a good option, no. Um, there's no undo function because it already is a pinned support, so we don't want to do that. Switch that off, the red indicates there's a problem. If we release the moment at joint one, that makes it simply supported. It, you don't release if you try to release the moment at the beginning of this, it gives a red symbol there again saying there's a problem. You just release them all except one. So we'll see more of this detail when we look at trusses, how about releasing, making pin joints. So we now run the analysis, switch off the grid, zoom extents. You can see the moment going to zero at the, at the pin, shear, the deflected shape, greater and the reactions. Change so they're two simply supported spans. If we look at the coordinates of this joints, you can type in uh, coordinates so you, they don't have to by default it snaps to the near it clicks to the nearest meter, but you can change it if you have more. So you can change that to well, perhaps this to 7.25. And it'll move it there. Or you could change that to 9.75 to change the structure like that. We can look at a table of member type and select types one or two. We can do end releases for that member uh, if we wish. So there's there are different ways of doing data entry. You can do it in the tabular approach or just the right click on the graph and change it there. Load cases can be defined, and uh, we'll look at that in a, in a separate video. We can now do that, and it does pretty much as before. You can save the definition of the structure, saves it in ALN files. Um, Masses and the, and the red and these arrows here are for dynamic for dynamic analysis of structures. The green is for the static analysis. You can also look at tabulated outputs from of results, displacements, reactions, member forces. Member forces along the member for and you can select different members. You can look at displacements along the member and etc. etc. You can print the results if you wish as well. So pretty comprehensive. Uh, output options for the results. In the next video we'll look at defining trusses and some of the special consideration there and in another video we'll look at defining different load cases and combinations of load cases.